Hi guys, Cindy from Bunny Brick Designs here. So I was just finishing up a custom order I got during my craft fair this weekend. Um, somebody had seen some bunny earrings that I made and asked for, and I'll kind of show you, they asked for a black and a gray. So they're going to have two earrings, one black, one gray. They wanted, they wanted it that way. Um, I've got to send them a picture for approval. And um, they're going to be picking it up next week at Bun Fest. So I figured, real quick, I would talk about the craft fair, and then I, <clears throat> excuse me, I would show you what I've started doing in the meantime. And it's going to be a very long project, so it's probably going to be several videos. Um, but first, the craft fair. I did decent. It was it was quite slow at the craft fair from what the other vendors that had been there. Um, for years had said that they, um, they said it was extremely slow. Um, I did about $250 and sold about 21 items, which wasn't bad. I sold a lot of earrings, um, a lot of earrings. I probably sold out of that 21 items, I probably sold 15, 16 pairs of earrings. So that was great. So now I can replace with, you know, some of the ones that I'm making from this, this month's box. Um, got the custom order for earrings. Um, and then the rest of it was I sold a necklace, a bracelet, a couple of beaded pens. Um, so yeah, so I did pretty decent. Anyways, so you remember this ribbon that I had showed you in the last video and I had talked about. I finally figured out what I wanted to do. And so I've already cut out the felt and then I painted it with metallic olive green paint so that it kind of has the same hue as this shibori ribbon and as some of these beads. So they, they kind of match. And what I was thinking about doing was stretching this fabric around this base here and sewing it down and not necessarily going to the edge but then taking the width of the ribbon and seeing how far I could stretch it and then just kind of sew in and around the points and then kind of cut it. So um, I was thinking about doing that because I thought that would look really cool with the browns at the end and then I could fill in with the beads. So um, I'm going to start that with you today. So this is my design, and so I just printed out a leaf online. I found a leaf, cut it out, cut out the leaf pattern, and then painted it and painted the edges. Now, normally when I do the shibori, I'll just draw and then I'll stitch. Um, I'm doing this backwards because there are a lot of fine points here. And what I didn't want to do would be trying to cut in and around these sharp curves and these tiny points with the beads because I was afraid of cutting the thread. So I cut I cut prior. And as you can see, there's a two different sides to the shibori. There's the sh side where there's more color, and then there's some, the side where there's more green and the color is kind of indented. I'm going to use this side where there's more color and I am going to decide, do I want the brown? No, I want the green on the back. So that looks like it's a fall leaf. So I'm just going to kind of measure here. And I'm just going to cut. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to cut a piece. And so then I need to find some green thread because I don't want to... I kind of want the thread to match. So I'm going to pause you and I will be right back. All right. So I've got myself some embroidery thread. Um, and so if you're going to be doing shibori um, and you're going to be sewing a lot of different color fabrics on. Hi, Velvet. I got velvet under my feet. So if you're going to be doing that, I would suggest investing in some embroidery, like an embroidery thread like set where you have all the different colors because then it just, it makes your life easier. Um, and I'm not going to take too much. I'm just going to take a bit of thread. I can always add more. Um, 
So if you don't want to, if you don't want long threads, you're not real comfortable, especially when you're doing bead embroidery. Um, you can always, always take shorter spans of thread and then, you know, do more. You just got to make sure that you keep your knots. Um, so I'm always, I always start, and this is going to be a little stiff because I did paint this. So this, the felt, oops, and I've already knotted, <laughs> twisted. Um, there. Ooh, there's a big knot in there. Oh, that's my knot. What in, what in, okay, so it, that's weird. All right, so we're just going to do this because I don't know what's going on with that thread. It looks like it, it, uh, something happened to it. I'm just going to put a knot in that thread there. And then I'm just going to go up just because I don't, that knot's not that big. And I don't know what happened to get it to um, fray. But I'm going to come back down through. And I don't have a really big piece of thread here now because I cut it. That's also fine. I'm just going to tie a knot back here. And then I'm just going to do a surgeon's knot, which is over, and then over again. And so now I've got it tacked down. And then I can come up through the point, or close to the point. So, like, I've got a little bit of a space there. And I'm going to start, because I do want, oh, I wanted the green. I do want this to be right up to the edge I'm not going to bunch it up and I'm not going to zigzag like I normally do because I want this stretched around this like that. So I'm here and I'm just going to hold it down. I'm going to find a spot and I'm going to stitch it. Ooh, that would be why my thread, it wrapped around everything. This is going to be one of the things that... Yep, I'm going to have to start this thread over. So this is one of the things that you have with points. Um, I'm just going to warn you, if you get stuck on a point, like I did, it's not going to um, do very well. So I need to get a new piece of thread. And um, we'll start over. So this is what really happens when you bead. Um... I know a lot of a lot of videos, and I know I've said this in the past, a lot of videos show you the perfect way to do everything. But and that's great if you're, you know, trying to learn how to do something, but in reality, most people struggle with and I need I need my Ooh, I can't get that through there. The joys of thread and tiny needles. All right, we're going to use a different needle because I know this one's got a nice big eye. There we go. And it's a little st it's a little sturdier. So this is a regular, uh, it's like a denim needle. Uh, there we go. All right, let's try this again. And I think I'm gonna start in the center this time. 
Um, so I'm just tacking it down, making sure, as you can see, it's snagging. It's going to snag. So I'm not going to probably do a ton of this on camera with you because this is going to take a long time to keep it from snagging on the points. Um, and you don't need to watch me struggle with that. I think I'm going to start in the center here just because I want to make sure that this is evenly spaced, I think. And that way I know that I'm coming up through the right spot and then I can just hold it in place and stitch down where it needs to go. And now we will be putting beads over this so it's not like it's going to need to be Perfect. So Velvet's messing with her food bowl. Velvet, be a good girl. Be a good girl. All right. And then I am just going to tack this edge. I'm not going to do a ton of tacking on this at this point because this just needs to be held down. We're gonna cover this with beads because <clears throat> there's gonna be a lot of beads on this end. So my, my thinking was is once I spread this out, I am gonna do a big point of, of beads there. So I'm just making sure my threads are all pulled tight. And I think I'm going to come over and start here, just getting this. I want a bunch there. So we're going to come up as I get snagged on my scissors. Because I've got too many things in the way. Uh, so Charlie's doing well after his, after his neuter. He's been seven days so he's out he gets to have exercise again um he's really thrilled about that he really is and so starting i'm going to give him another week and i know they usually say wait a couple months until the hormones calm down but because him and velvet are head over heels in love with each other already I think I'm going to try starting the bonding process a little early. Ooh. Well, I just went. That's all good. We're not cutting, so. I just went underneath, but that's fine. We'll cover that thread. Because I'm talking, not paying attention. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to try to bond them. So I'll be starting the bonding process probably in another week or so. After Bun Fest, um, I've got a break with craft fairs for a few weeks, so I will be able to um, spend the time to bond them. So, bonding's a process, um, not easy. Um, sometimes it's well, I can't really say it's not always easy, I should say. Sometimes it's um. You know, it takes a week, sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it takes, um, oh, six months. I've had, I've had them take a year. So, um, but I think, I think it's going to be quick because those two like each other. All right. So I got this sewn down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fan this out. And I'm going to see if I can sew up to a point and then maybe skip a little bit of the point there. So what I want to do is I want to be able to see it fanned out like this. And then I don't know if I want it to how. This is the thing. I don't know how fanned out I want it. 
if I want to just do it like that, if I want to go all the way around the edges. So I'm going to play with this off camera and then I will come back and show you what I've done. Um, so I will be back. Okay, guys. So I got through sewing. It actually didn't take me that long. I am going to knot off my and, and then we are going to cut the shibori. So just like a leaf in nature is not symmetrical, um, neither is the shibori ribbon on this, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And I did that on purpose just because I wanted it to, to look more organic. All right, so I've got a good knot in there. I'm just going to go through the fabric. I'm going to not cut off just yet in case I need to stitch down anything else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a pair of scissors and I'm going to use some really nice, um, going to get out my trimming scissors here for my fabric. And I'm going to just trim as close to the stitching as I can without cutting the stitching. So I'm just going in, I'm just lifting up the fabric, I'm just cutting the fabric really close to the edge, and we can trim this up after if we need to. So in trimming, I don't want to cut the, the felt and I don't want to cut the thread. And this will get stitched down um, even more and we may even just put some glue down. Um, normally I like to stitch the shibori ends. But for this design, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different here. And so this is what I was talking about. So this one is kind of squiggly over here, whereas this one, the leaf points are more straight. So I'm just making, I made it just a little straighter. And for this, I'm going to suggest always using a good sharp pair of scissors because you don't want, you really don't want to cut the threads and you want to be able to make sure that you're getting a good close cut here. There, perfect. So now I've got all of that cut, so now we can start the beading process. And so I'm going to finish this off. I'm just going to go back through the felt a little a couple of times just to make sure that this is pretty secured and when we glue it down, it'll be it'll be really secure because we've got a lot of, of shibori there. And if you're worried about, which I'm going to do here and then let it dry, which means I'm going to have to stop the video um, here, is I'm going to grab, and let me see if I can find it real quick. Some, where is it? Apparently not. So I've got this unopened tube of liquid stitch. Um, so what this is, and I can't find my open ones, so I don't know if I used it or... Um, liquid stitch is a... Um, it's a glue meant for fabric. And... Um, and I may put this on after just because I was thinking about it. I don't want this to get too stiff. So liquid stitch, and actually I'm going to have to poke a hole in that, I think. Um, liquid stitch is a glue that when you stitch it down, it literally glues the fabric to it. So I could glue the shibori down using liquid stitch or 
you could use even E6000, but I'm going to wait until I'm done the beading. And then I'm just going to put a bead of glue and actually, yeah, I'm going to have to poke a hole. So we're going to take a scrap. There we go. So I'm just going to do it right here just to show you. You can use liquid stitch. There's fray check. And actually my fray check might work better. Uh, because this stuff is not as stiff as. Um, so fray check. So this is fray check, which will also stop the shibori from fraying. And that one's not open either. It's what I get for having multiple um, tubes of this stuff. I always forget where I put it. So this stuff you do have to let dry. Um, so I'm just going to go around it with fray check on all the edges just so it doesn't fray. And again, this is going to get covered this part here is going to get covered with beads anyways so even if the fray check discolors the shibori that's going to have beads over it so when you're looking at it and it's got beads over it it's not really going to be seen but i do want to make sure that um that's not going anywhere so i'm going to let this dry and then i will be back um to put some beads on so i will see you in a few minutes hi guys i'm back so the um fray check finished drying it did stain a little bit which is fine because again i'm covering it with beads so i started doing the tip and i wanted to see you know bead sizing and get coloring so i'm using some um dynamites 11 and this is iris bronze so they're kind of got a little shine to them um and then I'm using beads from the bargain bead box and so I did the point to the you know to get this part even but now I'm just going to go around and these may not be exactly the same going around because again this leaf is not symmetrical and I don't want it to be so I'm going to continue on beading here and so I'm I'm doing my alternating small bead big bead small bead big bead only to give a little bit of spacing because these 11 O's are really tiny compared to the um, the beads that we have but I don't want to I don't have any bronze in the 8 O's so and I don't think I have 6 O's but the 6 O's would be the same size as these and I don't want them the same size. So I'm just doing my alternating crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead. And so I'm doing the greens. And I'm trying to make it so that they're big enough that they're going to cover the stain from the fray check. And if I need to, I will fill in with additional beads. Um, so like I can see a little bit of the, the stuff right here. I may add a bead right there when I'm done. So I'm just doing my standard back stitching, going through two, picking up two, back stitching. And so I'm alternating the green bicones with the green and brown or green and copper, green and bronze, whatever color that is, um, rondelles. And we will be filling in with, I will be filling in with additional beads around this just because 
I don't want it to be my standard, you know, st stitch. I want to have beads just coming in and going down and beads coming in and going down. And so I'm going to, I'm going to fill in once I've gotten my border covered. And so this is going to be a pendant. And I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I'm going to make this a pendant and then I'm going to use the beads to make a bead woven necklace that's going to attach to this. So this is going to be a really big focal for a fall collar style necklace. Um, so yeah, so I'm getting fancy with this one. Now see, it's, I don't know if I want to use a bicone there. Well, we'll use a bicone, we'll see. Because we're gonna end up, we're going to the point now. And so what I may want to do is fill in that point before I go any further with doing these. And again, I may not. I may just do another. So there's that one. And so when you're doing, when you're designing this, um, if you're gonna do this and follow along or you're gonna attempt this on your own and make something, um, it's organic and that's, that's the whole point of doing this is to be as organic as possible. Um, try to get it to flow. Try to get it to look, you know, look the way you want in your head. If you design it out on paper, great. Um, just keep in mind, it doesn't always, like you might think, oh, I'm going to fit you know, because I was going to fit another big bead in between these two beads, but there wasn't enough space, so I ended up with some seed beads in there. So, you know, it, and it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I like the organic look. I like that it's... So I'm going to do a... One of these green beads, and then I'm going to do a... one of the bicones and I'm going to go through as close to the tip as possible. Try not to twist up my beads. There. I like that. Now I'm going to pick up, I think I'm going to do a, on this point, I'm going to put a, um, seed bead at the tip just because it looks like it needs another bead there and I don't want I don't have room for a huge bead so I'm just going to pick up I'm going to pick up one we'll pick up two seed beads and go right to the tip And this is also why I cut my, um, I cut mine before I, I beaded because if I were to have tried to cut the threads on these when I was done, I would have ended up probably destroying so now I went through, I went back through that second seed bead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up another seed bead and maybe two because I need to go on the other side of this. Nope, I'm going to go through the bicone and then I'm going to pick up. So that this is where it's organic. So see, I was going to do this, I was going to put some beads here, but that bicone is too big for that point. So I'm going to come through the bicone and then I'm going to split off my design by picking up a seed bead and then picking up a, I think I'm going to go with a bicone here and then go down through the fabric. If I don't get my beads all messed up and then I am going to come up in between those two big beads 
because I'm not finishing my edging yet, I'm going to pick up two seed beads and a big green one, one of these big green ones that's um, faceted because I want this to be here. So this is going to be the start, and I'm going to pick up another seed bead. This is going to be the start of that the point that's coming in toward the center. So I'm just going to go down through the fabric. And the reason why I did that was because I wanted to see what I have for space here. So that if I need to pick up a you know, a bigger bead, some littler beads, so what I think I'm going to do there is I'm going to put a one of these little round brown ones. A C and I'm going to pick up a seed bead. And then I'm probably going to do a Actually, could I get away with a bigger bead? I think I could get away with a bigger bead there. So instead of doing that, I'm going to pick up a one of those light green ones and try that and I have a bunny licking my foot she is just going to town on my foot like there was candy or something on it not that bunnies eat candy but apparently she loves me all right that looks better so again, this is just my point here. So I'm trying to get the point done so that I have big points. Now I'm going to come up through and to try to get it to stay on it, I'm going to pull a little bit to the right of this bead. And then I'm going to go down through both of those beads because that's going to tighten it up and tighten it toward more toward the center instead of off the edge. And then I think I want to do a little bead and because now we're going to have to edge the shibori, but we're also going to have to edge and do and do our points. So at this point, I am, and that was a little too far out. So we are going to pick up, we're going to go back through. And if you happen to do that where you get it too far out, just go back through a couple of those beads. Try not to knot your thread up like I'm about to do. And then pull it tight up against it and then pick up a another bead and I'm going to pick up a bicone and then a seed bead and I'm going to go right down as close as I can to where that seed bead is going to end and then now I've got this to decide what to do with. So to start out, I'm going to go to the point and I'm going to put my needle in. And I think on this point, I'm going to use a seed bead and one of these creamy, yellowy beads. And that's going to start my point. And this is also why I painted the fabric green, was so that if there is anything showing at the end, it's going to show up the metallic green instead of having um, bright white as a background. And so I am just backstitching. I'm just continuing on and deciding what to do for my design. So I'm going to pick up, I'm going to go here, I'm going to pick up a, 
Oopsie. Try not to knot up your fat up your thread like I'm about to do. At least with um, the fire line that I'm using, so I'm using six pound fire line. This stuff is kind of easy to unknot, thank God, um, as long as the knot's not too tight. You can get your needle in and pull. That is if I can pull, I can... So you've got to find the right thread when you get a, get a knot in there, so... I'm just trying to get my needle in. There we go. That's not knotted, it's just twisted around. There we go. And now I've got to make sure that I am not knotted this way, which I am. I'm knotted around the bead. Okay, so this is what happens when you twist up your thread. So that's got to go through there. And now that has to go through there. And then that has to go through there one more time. There we go. All right, so now I'm up through. I'm not around my beads. I'm going to pick up a couple of seed beads because I don't have a lot of room there. And then I think I'm going to pick up... Do I want to do a couple more seed beads or do I want to... I think we're going to pick up a bicone there. And then I'm going to go down. I'm actually going to go down right next to the seed bead here. There. That looks good. Now we can come up through. So I'm going to make this brown one a edge instead of center. I'm going to go through there, get a seed bead and a bicone if I can find one. Oops, that's not a bicone. That's a bicone. Or if that was a bicone, it was a very misshapen bicone. I'm going to pick up another seed bead just so I have. And so that gives me a little space there in the center of this to fill in with something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two seed beads. Oops, after I go back through. I'm going to come up in between here. Pull tight. Pick up my two seed beads. And then I'm going to pick up a dark crystal. One of these dark, darker greens. And that should fit nicely in my spot. And it does. So that's perfect. And I'm just going to go back down through. And there we go. So I'm going to continue on beading. And so if, if you notice, some of the, the points have more lighter green. Some of them have more bicones. Some of them are darker. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted this to be organic and fluid. So I'm going to go finish up these points and 
Do my edging around here, and I will meet you back. Sorry about that, guys. My phone went off, and uh, it just shut off. So anyways, I was working on doing my points, and I know when we started... I had gotten the idea. I was working on the idea. So I've started working on getting my, what I'm going to call sprays, started here. So I've just gotten my three. So this one's going to be small. It's not going to attach to this. Same on this side. I'm going to fill in here and here with some beads. I just wanted to get the sprays started and done toward the toward the points and then I will go back and fill in because we are going to also add more to this big bead um so I am going to come in here and I'm going to add probably three or four seed beads there's three let's see if that's enough no, I want, we'll do two more. We'll do five. Five, nope, five's too much. Three, three. Let's try four, because what I want to do is I want to grab a little stone bead or a little glass beige bead and then we're gonna add on another stone bead, I think, maybe, if it'll fit. If not, we'll put a big, we'll put a green bead there. So the stone bead, and then that will, that might fit there. Let's see if we can get that to fit there. And then I need, I can do a, another little stone bead. There we go. So this is trying, I'm trying to make this as organic as possible um, to look like a leaf, a true leaf. Um, with veining and oh I'm stuck on there we go and the only thing I hate about beating points is getting stuck on it now I'm going to come back up through here and I'm going to tack that down because that really those big beads really need to be tacked down really well there we go and that looks good so now I've got some spots to fill in so I've got a small space here that could probably use some seed beads so I'm gonna start there first and I'm gonna come back up through the fabric and I'm going to grab, I don't know, three seed beads. And this is where measuring by taking your seed beads, dropping them in, and seeing if that's enough, too many, that should be perfect. Um, it's important that you don't get too many because then they'll bunch. There we go. And then I need a bead here. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to take, I think I'm going to put a bicone there. Will a bicone fit? Uh, too big. Bicone it is. Bicone and then some seed beads. And I think I'm going to go into this stone bead. And then go down.
And then we've got a little spot here that may use, I might be able to get another bicone in there. Yep, I'll be able to get a bicone in there. All right, so now, if you notice, the other side's not exactly the same. So I'm gonna start out back here and I'm going to pick up a bicone. Oops, I just lost that bicone. I don't know where it went. And then I'm going to pick up a lighter, ooh, a lighter brown bead here. Is that going to fit? No. So I need something smaller than the bicone. One of those. Oopsie. So I just tried to go back through the bicone without going through the big bead because I need to take these off. And that's why I don't stitch through when I'm testing sizing because if I stitch through the fabric, then I'd have to pull the needle out. So let's see if the bicone will fit there or the stone will fit there. I can get the stone in, but it's gonna need it's gonna need something small. So let's see if one of these tiny little white ones will work. See, that's too big, and that's that's a problem. Well, let's see if I, ow, if I stitch it down, and yes, I just stabbed myself with a needle. What not to do when you're beating All right, that'll that'll work. That will work. Yeah, that works. All right, so that's perfect. Um, and now I'm going to come back up through. And seeing that there's only two beads there, I am not going to tack down um, completely tight. Is this going to fit? Oh, that'll fit. Perfect. Actually, I don't want both of those. I just want that. So I'm, and I do talk to myself when I'm beating, um, so forgive me. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do for stitches. All right, so now we've got our stones, and this is not quite symmetrical, and that's fine because leaves are not 100% symmetrical. Now I'm going to come back up through... I want to go through this big bead and then I am going to because I am it is such a large bead and I want to go up a ways I'm going to pick up a big green one and then I am going to pick up a bicone and then I'm going to tack this down over top of those other seed beads. And that's fine, it'll just be raised up. Now I'm gonna come back up through, right in front of that bead, if I can get directly in front of it, there we go. I think I just went through those seed beads, that's fine. And then I'm going to go through these beads and pull those nice and tight. I'm going to add three seed beads. And head toward the point. And there's my, there's my three sprays that I wanted. 
and that actually covers up most of. I see some spots here that need to be filled in with um, from where the fray check went through and it's it spread a little bit while it was drying. So we do need to um, finish up right there. So I'm going to end this. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to just end that spray. And then I just see some spots right here that I can still see thread and some spots here. So I'm going to come and I'm going to start probably in this corner. Whoops. Here. And I'm going to start out with some seed beads. I'm going to pick up a couple seed beads, maybe one seed bead. And I'm going to use some of these smaller beads here. And we're just going to fill in spots. And then I'm going to pick up, actually, I probably should have picked up two or three seed beads. So let's do that. Let's pick up, I'm going to do three seed beads and then one of these. And that looks good. And then a single seed bead. And then I'm going to go down. And we're going to anchor down these beads by going through two more. All right. And then I'm going to pick up, I think, a green bead and a seed bead. That works. Go down right next to this big crystal, the dark green crystal. So now I'm going through the crystals at least twice. I just want to anchor them to make sure that they don't, like movement, if somebody moves them, they're not going to... Um, damage the and I think I'm going to take another green and then I'm going to take another and that should get me what I need to cover that corner. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna come up. And so on this one, it's here where I can see it. So I'm gonna start out here. And again, I'm not having to be symmetrical. This is not something that it is going to have um, a matching set, so I don't have to worry about doing, um, you know, asymmetrical or, you know, matchy matchy on an earring. So we're going to pick up one of those, a seed bead. Hi, baby girl. I got a bunny. I got a bunny at my feet again. Miss Velvet. She loves the camera. I don't know what it is about me being on camera, but. Oh, and I found her one of her toys that she had lost. So now, and actually I'm going to put two seed beads on that. Because that needs to space around that big stone. So she, we found her toy, like, she was digging underneath a cabinet, like, trying to get to it. And I couldn't figure out why, and that's because she has a rattle toy. Um, it's just a little ball with a bell in it. And apparently she likes playing with it, and she lost it in there 
probably months ago and just finally realized it was there and was like, hey, mom. So now she's got a noisy toy, so I can only wait to see what it's going to be like in the middle of the night. And maybe she lost it because mom threw it behind the cabinet in the middle of the night. Because um, for whatever reason, bunnies like to play with noisy toys at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't get it, but you know, hey. All right, so now we're just going to... put a big bead on there. I'm going to grab a couple little seed beads. Do I want two seed beads or one? One, because we're going to put a bicone there. So anyway, I'm getting ready to do Midwest Bun Fest. That's coming up Saturday. So you're watching this on Thursday. Um, and um, I won't get to finish this until next week, but uh, I'm filming on a Wednesday night, had a rough day at work, so decided I needed to bead and figured I could spend some time with you guys beading, making something pretty with this ribbon because I know a few of you wanted to see what I was doing. And um, this is my relaxation, so... Um, I enjoy doing beading. I enjoy actually making the videos and sharing with you um, all my creations. And all right, so I think I'm going to end that there. I don't think I need any additional beads. So all of my fray check is covered. And it does kind of look like it's going in this direction, which I like. Um, so it's heavier. The beads are heavier on this side of the um, the piece, which is really kind of cool. So I'm just going to finish this off, and then I am going to pause you. I'm going to grab some... Um, leather and we're going to pick out some leather for our color um, for the back. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a floral leather, um, embossed leather, just because I think that'll look really cool um, if I can find some that are green or green and orange or fall colored and I think that'll look really neat. Um, and to be honest, I don't need to knot this too well, just because all of this is going to get glued down anyway. All right, so I'm just going to go through this a couple more times like this. That's not coming out. It's, um, it's definitely attached really well there. That'll get glued down, and so that looks really cool. I'm going to pause you for a second, and I will be right back. All right, guys, decisions, decisions. Do I go with the green, um, or do we do one of these to, nope, nope, maybe. That's a maybe, because that's more of the bronzy color. That's got silver in it, nope. Nope. Definitely nope. Definitely no. Definitely no. Maybe. Ooh, I kind of like that. And definitely no. All right, so I've got all these different leathers I bought a while back. Um, all right, so let's see. Do we go with that? Um... I mean, it is going to be on the back, so it's not going to be seen. Um, I don't know where that bead came from. It didn't come from, from this. All right, so... Hmm. Hmm. 
this is more gold so this is more of the bronzy um and i can't do it on the the suede because i don't have it's not big enough it's gonna have to be this all right so i am gonna glue down and you know the drill i'm gonna glue this down i'm gonna let it dry overnight um just because it's getting late And then we will trim and, oof, I'm almost out of glue. So this is also why I use these little E6000 tubes. Um, I had the bigger ones, and while I do use a lot of this, um, unfortunately I don't use enough of it where the big tubes will dry out on me. And so I use little tubes. Because I can get, usually I can, I can get quite a bit done with these little tubes. And then they don't dry out. So I buy packs of, I think, um, I don't know, packs of six or eight or something like that. And so I'm just trying to get as much of the glue out of this as I can before I throw it out. Because this one is done. All right. I also could use the liquid stitch um, to tack this down, but... Um, I just like the E6000 better because it's flexible. Um, all right. And now I'm going to figure out which side is up. And then I'm going to tack this down as close to the edge as I possibly can so I don't waste leather. And I am going to just cut around. because I don't need the whole piece out. And so I'm going to glue leave that to sit and um Yeah, so that's going to look really cool when we're done. This is going to be the top, so I am going to be when I bead um the edging, I am going to bead a loop here and that's going to be um, attached or I'm going to actually I'm thinking these points might be the where we put the, the collar piece off of it um, I haven't quite decided exactly how I want to do that but um, anyways I'm going to let this dry and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching guys <music>